This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're in potentially the last match in bubble. I hope so. hope so. I feel a bit under pressure. I've got Sam Jones over there listening in. I've got Boatsy, got 258 Management, Will Harvey, Mark. You know, I feel a bit under pressure here, but not hopefully the last bubble, the last bubble and the last event behind closed doors. So quite emotional, a lot of relief, especially coming off the back of Saturday as well. Um, and, and a good show, looking forward to it. And um, like I said, yeah, parts of the bubble have been fantastic and parts of them will remain. So in the future, all fighters will enter the hotel on the Wednesday of fight week. We'll keep them here, but they'll be able to go out. And you know, we'll keep the pool, the table tennis, the darts, the camaraderie, which we'll keep. Do you know what I mean? It's been good, hasn't it? Uh, one bit of advice I'd give you, which I'm qualified to talk about as I've been in the majority of your bubbles, just keep the bubbles, mate. Just keep we'll, them. We'll keep the bubbles, but with more freedom, basically. I, I don't know. I won't let you down. I will not give you up. Got to have some faith in the sound. It's the one good thing that I've got. Anyway, yeah. George Michael. Love it. Um, I don't know really where to start. I'll tell you where we're going to start. Let's start from the weekend. Yes. Just gone. Uh, yeah, it looked... Uh, Great setup in uh, in Texas, 73 plus yeah. thousand fans there. It just yeah, it, watching it at home, it just it makes us think, yeah. when are we going to see that? You know, it was like a dream, really. Um, I've I've done those those sire shows before, and the one thing I've always kicked myself about is I've never actually taken time to just look around and soak it up. And I did on Saturday, and it was amazing. I mean, the venue was incredible. Um, the energy was incredible. The atmosphere was incredible. Um, you know, Billy was incredible. Canelo was incredible. Everybody played their part um, for a historic event. And it just made you realise what's coming over here. Because once we open back up, people are going to be excited to going to go out people want to experience atmosphere again people want to embrace live sports and great shows and you know that was that was was one of the best shows I've ever been involved with and, and one of the biggest atmospheres I've ever seen so amazing amazing and uh, you know uh, definitely a weekend that I'll remember for a long time well uh, come on to Canelo in just a second but obviously Billy Joe Saunders has suffered a horrific mm. Injury, oh injury! Um, I think when you were watching that, obviously you was there, so I don't know how aware you was of kind of some that sort of damage being done. Anyone who's been around boxing and seen those injuries before, and unfortunately I've seen quite a few of them, you know when someone busts their eye socket. It's not, a, you know, a, a swelling like a typical closed eye. It's a deformation of the face, and you know you saw it with Kel Brook twice. You saw it with Billy Joe Saunders. I've seen it with multiple other fighters as well. And as soon as he lifted his head up from the uppercut, you could see straight away that he'd smashed his orbital bone. I thought he was very brave to continue the round. I thought, um, I mean, one thing that Billy Joe Saunders showed in that fight, he's got a great chin. He took some big shots, and that was one of them. Um, I think if he would have come out for the next round, I don't think he would have ever boxed again. Um, and I think... It would have been a, a terrible, terrible situation that, that round if he would have gone out. So I think the corner team did the right thing. I thought Billy was great in, in every sense of the word. I know we had our ups and downs in the build-up, but fight week, the ring walk, he soaked it up and he came to win. You know, he, he never came into that fight trying to do anything else other than win. In the ring walk, at the press conferences, in the ring. But unfortunately, he fought the... the best pound for pound fighter in boxing I had the um, scores closer than the uh, the judges I didn't have him winning the fight I had him winning at least two probably three rounds so but he was just you know he didn't quite have the firepower and, and Canelo was just too good but Billy Joe I thought done a fantastic job great performance and I'd love to see him fight again because I think his stock has risen um, and hopefully he can recover from the injury and be back. Yeah, I suppose we'll have to see how long his recovery period is, first of all, and then see what see what happens after that. The, the recovery and also he, what he wants to do. You know, I think that I think what he'll be thinking at the moment is, I want to get in there and I want to fight again. But also you have to see how, how long it takes him to recover 
And time is a good healer. You know, you see how he feels in a couple of weeks, a couple of months, and then. But for me, if he's fit and healthy, I would love to see him back in the ring. The Eubank fight is still there, huge always fight. will be. Yeah, huge fight. I mean, again, sometimes Billy might look at that fight and say, well, I want to try and win my world title back. I want to fight Chris Eubank Jr. I've already beaten him. But you can't ignore the size of that fight at the same time. Um, let's talk about Canelo. I think, uh, aside from the fight itself, the, the antics in the press conference, and you looked very, not uncomfortable, but you were like, Demetrius, get out of here yeah, now. I, yeah. I just, I got a few people saying, oh, why didn't you back Demetrius Andre? Because it was Canelo's press conference. And listen, fighters have got to do what they've got to do to get, and I actually don't think it worked too badly for Demetrius. I mean, Canelo gave him a talking to, but at the same point, people were talking about Demetrius Andre. Good, bad, you know, happy, sad, doesn't matter. They were still talking about him. And Canelo was quite cutting, wasn't he? And I think people are just enjoying seeing the personality of Canelo Alvarez. And obviously, because I'm around him and our team are around him, I don't speak Spanish. So he's having to speak English. Whereas before, I think everyone around him speaks Spanish. So that's his nat natural. And don't forget, he's never learned English. It's just things that he's picked up, which is quite amazing as well. But, Did you ever tell him to get the fuck out of here? <laughs> <laughs> get the fuck out of here, man. Um, but, look, I'm only really getting to know him now. But I'm pleased that people are seeing um, all the things that I see, which is funny, quite vicious, cheeky, you know, just just a normal guy. And um, he's, he's, look, he's an amazing fighter. And, but it's the confidence that he has right now. You know, just stuff about when we talked about the ring... You know, stuff when, like, even going in the change room before the fight, he was just, like, literally asking me when's the next fight and, you know, I, I don't know. But I, I, I think um, he may be unbeatable. He may be unbeatable. And uh, I thought Billy done, Billy done a great job and gave him the best fight that he could. But it just wasn't good enough for against Canelo Alvarez. Uh, if it's not for some bizarre reason Caleb Plant yeah. in September what is kind of the backup options immediately for him to fight in September then well I think that's the ultimate focus to, to become undisputed as quickly as possible I mean don't forget um, from the from last December he wasn't even a world super middleweight champion right and now we're in uh, May and he's one belt away from becoming undisputed so he won the, the WBA off Callum and the vacant WBC. He won the WBA off Billy Joe Saunders and he wants to try and win the IBF off Caleb Plant. It's an incredible run of fights and boxed a mandatory in between them all. So, you know, if you talk about fighting in September, you're talking about four fights in 11 months at that level. It's quite astonishing. Um, I think it'd be very sad if we don't make the Caleb Plant fight because... Why, I mean, if you're Caleb Plant, why wouldn't you want to fight Canelo Alvarez for undisputed? Um, but you never know. And if, he do, if that fight doesn't happen, there's other options out there for him. Of course, there's a Gennady Golovkin trilogy, which remains a huge fight. There's also uh, a fight up at light heavyweight, potentially with Dimitri Bivol, which is a fight that, that Canelo's talked about as well. But all the focus is um, with, with uh, Caleb Plant. Um, I got a phone call later with Luis de Cubas to go through the options and Canelo's in a great position you know he's a network free agent DAZN are going to try and break the bank to get that fight on there Fox are going to you know come in with a, an outstanding offer for both guys so in this situation you're more of a, an advisor than a, than a promoter because now it's a case of normally a promoter would have their network and if Canelo Alvarez was signed to DAZN it would be very difficult to make this fight because Al Heyman may say, no, it has to be on Fox. But there may be more money to do it on zone. So everyone's just got to be sensible, listen to all the options and make the fight because it's the undisputed fight. It's the right fight for everybody to, to make. I'm sure Caleb Plant wants it. I know Canelo Alvarez wants it. I think um, hopefully he gets it in September. But despite the relationship that you've kind of formed with him over the last however long, this is a little bit out of your hands now, working together, because obviously this goes out and anyone can put in no, to put this made, fight on. He's made it clear that he wants me to, to head this up for him um, and work with him moving forward. That's fine, I can do this on Fox. You know, I've, I've, so you would still work with him on a different network, yeah? Yeah, no problem. And, and does own know that as well? And my relationship with Canelo has always been, 
under the understanding of DAZN that Canelo could fight on other platforms. So my job is not, oh, I must make this fight on DAZN. Of course, that's where I'd like the, the, the fight to sit. But at the same time, if there's a, a, be, a bigger opportunity to, to box somewhere else and he takes it, I'll still be his guy, I'll still have his back and I'll still make sure we continue to do the job that we've been doing. So, as a what to him though? As a promoter. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's um, his instruction will be to have uh, his break now. I'll talk to Louis de Cubas. We'll meet in a couple of weeks. We'll present the options to him. If it's, you know, if it, if it doesn't land on the zone, it's not, oh, see you, Eddie. You know, I see myself as a big part of the team and I want to be a huge part of the team because they're great to work with. And I think we've done a great job. I think he's extremely happy. I think we've got a great relationship with him and Eddie Reynoso. We've got a couple of announcements coming up next week about a new partnership with Canelo and Eddie Reynoso um, for, for a series of, of big shows, which is going to be um, fantastic. And we've worked very well together. So it's not, like I said, it, this role's more not just you have to box here, otherwise. And I think this is what is quite um, liberating about his position is that politics won't stand in the way of fights and I think that's why he wanted to do it because he can fight any fighter from any promotional company on any platform I'll tell you what you're going to some great lengths for some DNG clubber aren't you I've got a lot of DNG clubber at the moment Dolce Gabbana you know some call it DNG some call it Dolce Gabbana I prefer Dolce Gabbana um, one thing I found about the Dolce Gabbana though when I look back is I really don't look very good in it compared to him do you know what I mean? Like, when I put my pyjamas on, people don't really know what the look is. When he wears it... They silk, yeah. They are, yeah. Um, what was the thing you was... Because my mum's got something similar. No, no, she has, the colours. What was that thing you was wearing, the, the oh, pat, yeah, pattern yeah. thing? That's d and as well. That's yeah. part of the new summer collection, yeah. I mean, I don't know if you saw them posting across their account about, about me. I saw it, I saw it, yeah. Eddie wears the new range from Dolce. Um... I just think it's, I think it's, I think it's a good look for boxing. Do you know what I mean? I mean, you know, haters are going to hate you. No, I love yeah. it. No, that's it a sort of, that's fine. right up my street. It's fine. In oh, fact, yeah. I, I, it's fine, mate. What is it? Yeah. XL. XL. Double XL. Double XL. Might be too big for me. I don't know. Edward, just finally on Canelo, you've made some comments that you'd like to see him fight in the UK, yeah. and you were saying to me that at some point. This is obviously off camera. You're saying that you'd like to bring him over at some point to the UK. Well, I think he's beaten, what, seven Brits now or something like that. So I think he's getting bigger and bigger in the UK. Obviously, we ran the, uh, the Zone documentary with the BBC on Fight Week as well, did huge numbers and is still doing huge numbers. I would like to bring him here just for some media activity and to meet the fans. I think he'd be, he'd be shocked at the response. Do you remember when we brought Devin Haney uh, just to, to London? And this was two years ago. The place was mobbed. They were queuing outside the street. So um, my plan for Canelo Alvarez is fight Caleb Plant and then I want to see him fight all over the world. You know, I want to see him fight in the UK, in the Middle East, in the Far East, a huge show back in Mexico. There is so much to do with Canelo Alvarez and I feel like only now in the last year are we really starting to push the commercial boundaries to make him the global star that he should be because the numbers that he delivers in the US, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, obviously the crowd, but the US subscriptions for DAZN last week, the UK subscriptions for DAZN last week, with Billy, of course, you know, just massive, massive numbers. Do we have an indication? Uh, no, I think that's for them to say, but I mean, I think at the moment, obviously, what's that? That, that, that one for the UK. Really? Yeah. And, and, and double that in the US. Oh, okay. So, That's good. But don't forget as well, you know, in the UK, DAZN is still 199 So it was, a, it, was a, it was a great opportunity. When's that price hike going to change? I think as they expand their content, I think that's inevitable, but it's still got to be at the right, you know, the right price. And I think that they, they have a fantastic understanding of that. You know, you look in the US and it's $19.99 a month or you get the annual pass for what 100 bucks and other platforms are charging like if that fight on saturday was on fox or showtime or espn would have been a hundred dollars 
or ninety dollars. You can get a whole year's subscription for DAZN, which, by the way, has included three Canelo fights in the last five months as part of that annual subscription. The value is on another level. And I think people in America are starting to look at that pay-per-view price and saying, you know, we're being asked to pay this all the time. I mean, you've got another one coming up with Charlo. You just had to pay 50 bucks to watch Andy Ruiz fight Chris Ariola. You know, you've got Floyd Mayweather against Logan Paul. Is that 90 bucks? Or something like that. I, I mean, it's total madness. And I get stick for 20 quid. Do you know what I mean? You're a horrible fighter. Fuck you, man. You're horrible. <laughs> You're a horrible fighter, man. I think that's done probably more, uh, done the rounds more than the... Get the fuck out of here, man. Hey, oh, anyway. Oh, yeah. Any, do no, okay. Right, moving on. Right, so we've heard Frank Warren say on TalkSport, I believe, that, surprise, surprise, it is Saudi Arabia, yeah. and August 14th has been whistled down to the date. So can you confirm that, yes? Yeah, I, I, I agree with Frank for once, yeah, that is that is correct. Um, I spoke this week about the 7th and the 14th. The 7th was actually the original date that the fight was planned for. Um, but that is also the final day of the Olympics. So the 14th is the date. Um, Again, you know, it, it's Eid at the moment over there and we're, we're finalising different bits of escrow agreements and basic stuff. But yeah, he's right. August 14th in Saudi Arabia. So in a separate interview he did before that, he was talking about kind of the, the financial implications of seeing the money in the bank, etc. Can you make comment on that? So, yeah, obviously, these are the same people that we've dealt with before. We're very comfortable. But he's right, you know, we have to go through that process, which is quite a long process in terms of paperwork and escrow accounts. Um, the, the financial element of this deal is not a problem at all. Um, like I said, it's the same people we did the Andy Ruiz fight with, but we have to still go through that process. But you know, everything's agreed on the fight, um, and yeah, we, we need to start planning now for official announcements and press conferences, which will be a lot of fun. Um, and you know, finally be able to give everybody the fight they want so badly. So, but I've told everyone all along, the fight's happening. And it is happening. And now, thankfully, the other side agree. Is there any possibility that that date changes from the 14th at all? No. I mean, not under the agreement, no. So both fighters want to fight. Tyson Fury hasn't fought for a long time. He really wanted to fight by the end of July. OK, we're two weeks past that. AJ's ready. He wants to fight. Um, you know, And also, the, the division needs to see the fight. You know, you've got Sam Jones sitting over there. He's got... I mean, how they haven't ordered Joe Joyce against Alexander Usyk yet, I don't know. But he should be fighting. You know, he's he's coming off the back of a Daniel Dubois victory. He's going stale now. You know, he should be fighting Alexander Usyk. I think that the, the tide is with him. That fight's for the interim belt. To be honest with you, now, because they've waited so long, I reckon the Fury fight will take place before that fight. And if it does, we all know that the winner of Fury, Joshua, has to fight the winner of Usyk against Joyce. And if that fight happens after, then the, that fight will be for the full world title because there's a second fight. Do you know what I mean? So, and also there's IBF mandatories. There's a WBC mandatory that will be due. So we need, the division needs to see that fight, not just the, everybody else. And the whole plan is to make sure that we do the two fights in 2021. And that's why we can't go any later than August 14th to give the guys a chance to do the second one in December. So you believe that the second fight, That's if it will if happen in December, get, yeah? If someone gets injured in the fight or a terrible cut, I mean, who knows? But that's why we want to give ourselves every chance to do the two fights this year. Has it been decided how this is being headlined, as in name-wise, who's first on all the marketing? I'm not going to talk about uh, the agreement, but I'm sure there's some interesting conversations all around. I've also talked about uh, a dual ring walk. What do you think about that? Interesting. I thought about that, and then I thought, but what music would you use? Do you know what I mean? So you might see some Del Boy coin, coin tosses, you know. No, but is it going to be AJ Fury or Fury AJ? Depends. Depends on which platform and so forth. So on one more. platform, it could be marketed one way and one on another. It's been done before. Um, how are you deciding the undercard, as in, do the other side get a certain amount of fights, you get a certain no, amount of no, fights? just to be agreed between all parties. So you will see 
uh, matchroom fighters, top rank fighters, Queensbury fighters, MTK fighters, you know, we'll all agree between ourselves. Be a big card. Yeah, uh, how many fights are you looking to put on the undercard for that? Like seven or eight fights. But, you know, it'd be good to have us against the uh, top rank or Queensbury against Matram or, you know, nice, nice mix. And everyone has got to be happy in that respect. We've got a number of big shows planned around that time as well. So, we, you know, there was a couple of guys you were talking to earlier here who will either, I'll be either looking to put on the AJ card or um, fight camp. So that will be uh, discussed between the parties. To be honest with you, all the focus has just been on getting the fight done. Riyadh? Yes. Yeah, or Jeddah. Well, Riyadh or Jeddah. Yeah. But, yeah. So, shout out Big K. Prince Khalid. He's done it again. He's, uh, you know, he's, he's been... He, he, everyone knows the funny story, which was I was asked to speak to Prince Khalid for the Andy Ruiz fight, and I was so rude to him because I just thought... The amount of times I've looked to do a Middle East fight and it's fallen through... And then when Prince Khalid approached me, I was just like, mate, please don't wait. And he said, no, we want to do the Andy Reese fight. Look, I've, you know. And then I sent him the agreement and they sent, I said, guys, just leave it, leave it. And then, of course, we set up the escrow agreement, the money was paid, and it was a tremendous event. They delivered everything they said they were going to deliver, down to building a stadium just for that fight that was taken down after that fight, right? And the whole point of that fight was to do the undisputed fight. At the time, it was AJ against Wilder. And of course, Prince Khalid's vision for the kingdom has been to bring the biggest fight in boxing. And potentially, I think it is the biggest fight ever to the kingdom. And he's done it. So, you know, shout out to him for his vision and his belief and his patience, because it's been a long process. And um, yeah, we just tidy everything up and you'll get, you'll get to work, mate, with your views. He once said to me, Big K said to me, Coogan, I don't lose. That's what he said. He, he, was, he was relentless to make this fight. And I knew, but because I knew him, because I knew the people involved, I knew it was going to happen. But, you know, people who haven't been involved with it before will be sceptical. And I was. I was extremely sceptical before the fight. But I also knew, once he told me, Prince Khalid, this fight is happening. I knew it was done. Are they building another stadium? That is something they're looking at, yes. I mean, August 14th, the, the temperature's about 24 degrees at night at 11 o'clock. It's not horrendous, but something they've got to consider as well at the same time. But they would like to build a new stadium for this fight, but that's down to them. Has the broadcast situation been sorted out for this? Uh, or is it still, still being discussed? It's been, being discussed, but again... This is the main focus, and then that'll be worked out in terms of the... Go on, what are you going to ask? No, in an ideal world, um, what day would you like to literally like, do your, your famous posting? Because I'm assuming everyone's got a post yeah, we should simultaneously. Probably, I mean, it's Eid at the moment, so it's not... You know, it's probably... I was hoping, as you know, to announce, but everyone... We've written to the governing bodies as well to confirm the dates and everything. So, um, you know, it's, I always like to go quiet before announcement, but I think of a fight this magnitude, that's impossible. I mean, basically, you've been told the date and venue already. So, but it'd be, still be nice to just post it, announce it, and just have a beer and go, thank fuck for that, quite frankly. OK, um... Who, just last one on this, Ed, who else would you have considered as serious offers to host this fight out of all the people? Who did you consider, like, these were serious players, these were nearly as got in the fight? Territories. Yeah. Well, there was a couple of other territories in the Middle East. There was a, one country in the Far East. We looked at America, we looked at the UK. And I've seen a lot of people messaging me about, oh, how can you not do it in the UK? I mean, you do know that we're not allowed a full crowd. We went to Wembley Stadium and asked them, can we be guaranteed a full crowd for the end of uh, July, early August? And the answer was no. We try, and I ca we can't, our job as promoters, I can't go to a fighter and say, right, firstly, um, you're going to get half the money to fight in the UK, but just to let you know, there is a chance that half might become a quarter if we can't get a crowd. That, I'm not doing my job. 
you know, you've seen from Billy Joe at the weekend, this isn't a, this isn't a joke, this sport. You know, you've got to make sure these fighters get the most amount of money for the biggest fights they're in. So the only way to do this fight this summer is to do it there. And we're all very happy to do that. OK. Um, can we discuss the Michael Hunter situation? Obviously, we heard from Callis Allen the other day was fuming what regarding Philip Hergovic. I think it's a fucking joke, to be honest with you. Excuse my language. I mean, you've got... You got Hergovic, who's out training, consummate professional, right? Out training in Miami, ready to fight. You've got Michael Hunter, who we've been negotiating with for six weeks, right, about this fight, and then we can't reach a deal, and he's posting nonstop. You know, the bounty hunter. Yeah, I'm gonna, you know. I mean, bear in mind, this fight is to become mandatory for the IBF world title. You are gonna fight either AJ or Tyson Fury. Right? Or you're going to fight for the vacant world title, if the winner of that fight. So we go to purse bids. No one even turned up to the purse bids apart from me. But I didn't put a low ball in, which I could have done. I put a nice big offer in, right? Hergovic over the moon. Hunter, not just happy, goes on social media, posts posters about the fight, right? Yeah, I'm going to become mandatory. Yeah, the bounty hunter. Yeah, no one can beat me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then basically just goes completely quiet, doesn't answer any emails, and then goes and fights Mike Wilson. Is he? I think he was in um, on the Triller card. He was on the, in the Beach Boys. Um, I've had Mike Wilson in 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 Monaco. He fought Gassiev, right, for the world title. I mean, he's a he's a he, he weren't even a big cruiserweight. I mean, what is Michael Hunter doing? So I feel sorry for for Hergovic. Now we're going down the list with the IBF. But what a time waster. We saw Billy Nelson be very vocal about Martin Bacoli. I wanted to ask you kind of, well, he's, he's now in the top 15. He's number 15, I think. So it has to go all the way down the list to get to Martin Bacoli. But I'll tell you something now, there's a lot of people that don't want to fight Hergovic, right? And a lot of them are also unavailable. Usyk is there, right? You've got Caballel who's got a fight there. You've got, uh, I mean, you've got other fighters that, quite frankly, I mean, you've got Dempsey McLean. You've got um, Zhang. I think he's 14. You've got, you've got Parker. Parker might fight him. No, he's got the Chisora rematch. Um, so it could go to Bacoli, but it has to go for everybody else first. But the, the most annoying thing about the situation was the time wasting. If he was never going to fight Hergovic, why didn't he just say... I'm going to move on. I'm going to go and fight Mike Wilson. But the whole idea, isn't it? Isn't it to be, the whole idea is to win a world title, to become mandatory. And by the way, that's a, I, mean, I don't know, Sam's over there. 50-50 fight maybe against Hergovic. I mean, Hergovic is a favourite because of size, but Hunter, you know. So, I don't know. He obviously didn't back himself. And I like Michael Hunter, but I just think it was a bit, a bit shit, really. Okay, well, but who is it likely to be? I know they're saying they've got to go through the IBF. Could be Parker, could be, uh, I mean, Usyk's there, but obviously he's, he's fighting Joyce. Could be Zhang, could be McLean, could be Bacoli, could be, you know, they're going to go down. Caballel, he's got a fight schedule, I think. I mean, Caballel, what's happened to him? I mean, he's fighting Kevin Johnson. They've just announced yesterday. You know what I mean? Um... Just going back to Martin Bacoli, though, has it really kind of kicked on since the Kuzman win? What, what is the situation with him in regards to, you were saying that what you could do for him after that win over Kuzman? Well, we, I, th I believe our deal's up with Martin Bacoli, but still happy to work with him. Um, haven't, you know, we, we, we talked about the Hergovic fight with him. We made him an offer for the Hergovic fight and he turned it down. You know, he's, he's more than... Uh, more than uh, right to do so if he doesn't think it was the right deal but and maybe it will present itself again Okay um, I do want to ask you about Liam Smith who I don't know if you've seen the fight yeah so a lot of people well everyone I've spoke to believe that Liam Smith did enough to win the fight against Kerbinov. Um what did you think of the fight and what could be next 
for Liam off the back of that performance? Um, I thought it was a really good performance from Liam Smith. I thought it was a really good fight. I thought he won the fight by a couple of rounds. Um, it was one of them when it went to the scorecards, it was like, you know, um, are, we, are you going to get this in Russia? Um, I think Liam Smith can come back for, for fights at world level. You know, I'd love to see him do the Kurbanov rematch. Um, I'd love to do that fight in Liverpool next time out. It was a great fight. Um, there's, some, there's some big fights for him domestically, but I still feel that he's beyond that level at the moment. Right? And then, you know, I don't know. I mean, I mentioned the other day, and, and Liam wouldn't look at this fight yet, but if he keeps on winning and you look at his world rankings, I'd like to see Anthony Fowler against Liam Smith in Liverpool. I think that's a huge fight. Um, and Fowler's moving up the, the world rankings at pace. And there's going to be a time Fowler's going to step up in a big fight in the summer where Liam might want Fowler's world rankings. But at the moment, Liam's kind of saying, no, no I'm, I'm world level, but... He wants Vargas and Tim Zhu. Yeah, but he, lost, he just lost to Kurbanov. I don't think he should have lost, but he did lose. So it's difficult to get a Tim Zhu fight coming off a loss to Kurbanov. Um, even when he should have won the fight. But, listen, we'll push for those fights. I would love to do the Kurbanov rematch. I thought it was a great fight. So, But whether Kurbanov wants to come to Liverpool, like Beefy went to Russia... Well, he should do, surely. He should, but I very much doubt it. Um, a word on Jamie McDonnell? Yeah, great career. I mean, I texted him. I was, I was very lucky to be a small part of, well, but all his big paydays and big fights. I mean, he just had it off at a time where PBC came into boxing and, you know, he got paid a fortune for Kameda. Then he got another fortune for the rematch. Then he went and fought in Uwe. Um, he boxed at Wembley. And he, you know, had other defences around the world. He boxed in Monaco. You know, he really got a lot out of his career, I felt, you know. And um, I know the Inoue fight obviously didn't work out for him, but... You know, I don't think he should. He was at a stage in his career where he just couldn't make bantamweight anymore. And great, great kid, great career. Bit of an unsung hero, I feel, of British boxing. But can look back with, with tremendous memories and can walk away from the sport happy and healthy. Um, just a few Twitter uh, wars going on, shall we say, yeah. over the last few days. We had Tyson Fury and, and Dillian White. And yeah. we had said anti Joshua instigated that one the other day and Tyson Fury. Yeah. Talking about Spartans and Dossers. Yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah. Spartans, Dossers. I, I don't know, I haven't really... I know that... Um, AJ, I think you're going to see a... I think you're going to see an active AJ in this fight. I think he's going to enjoy the build-up, to be honest with you. Um, Dillian was having a pop-up fury, was he, for not getting involved in the Billy Joe Saunders' dad scuffle when he was trying to get in the ring. Um, oh, it's all good fun, isn't it? It's all good fun. We just crack on and get ready for, for this Saturday night. What's happening with Dillian White? I'm seeing him, these guys tomorrow, actually, to go through the next move. I'd like, I'd like to see him fight in America. Um, I think that's the place for him to have his next fight. Does Chuck this in here? Could Ariola be a potential opponent? I thought that the other day. A right. um, lot, lot of potential opponents, but certainly Ariola in the States would be a big fight as well. A couple of other names. Okay, but definitely in the States you should think oh, he'll fight. But I think I feel like... Now, he's had a lot of tough fights back to back, so I'm not saying he's going to take an easy fight, but you know I, I see his big fight coming later this year. So unless he waits for that, there is an option for him to box in July in America if if he wants that. Okay, finally this Saturday. Yes, I will get it going. Around. I know. Once you've got I know. The gossip out of the way. Hold on a minute, mate. We're just doing things in chronological order. Okay. okay. That's a big word for you. Yes, it is. Uh, I'll just hand you the mic. All right, let's just say, obviously, get well soon, Terry Harper. Hopefully yeah. that fight gets rescheduled for another time against Troy. But uh, the card goes ahead. So just talk to us about the card. Well, it's a triple European title fight card, which is actually quite unique. I can't remember the last time I had two European title fights on a card. Of course, the return of Joshua Boazzi against Daniel De Santos, 15-0. Lively kid. I mean, great story. I don't know if you've interviewed him yet. You need, to, you need to ask him about his backstory. So he was in prison, found boxing, changed his life, etc. Very fit, very strong, very rangy as well, can punch as well. And JB's got to come and make a statement. You know, I said to Josh Boazzi, he just hasn't been active enough. And you've got these other light heavyweights at the moment 
who are coming on strong. You know, uh, Lyndon Arthur with a good win over uh, Yard. Craig Richards did great against Bivol the other night. Callum Johnson's back. Um, so now's your time to go and make a statement and, and stay active. Win on Saturday, have a big fight at fight camp in the summer and then go and fight for a world title. Whether it's Bivol yourself, whether it's Joe Smith Jr., those are the kind of guys. Better be have, you know, tough, tough opponent. But these are the guys boatsy has got to be looking at. But he's got to look good on Saturday and he's got to be active. Great fight for Lerone Richards uh, against the Carolis for the, uh, the European super middleweight title. This is a really tough fight, actually. The Carolis had the world title, the regular WBA title, beat Feigenberts, drew with Zoiga. He can really fight. It's a big step up for Lerone Richards. And I'm expecting him to be in a tough fight on Saturday night. Gamalia fight back after a horrific uh, couple of years of injury, of course, winning the European Super Bantamweight title in Italy last time out. It was a really good fight against Jason Cunningham, you know, Steffi Ball's charge on the card, and also Steffi Ball charge in Lee Appleyard against Dalton Smith for the English title, which is a really good step up for Dalton Smith, who I think is arguably one of the best young prospects in the sport right now. And Tommy McCarthy, who's fighting Alexander Dürer, first defence of his European title, if he gets through, I want to make the Chris Billum Smith fight, British Commonwealth European title. Um, also, the pro debut of Solomon Dakers, which has been Sam Jones has been sweating about because it's taken forever for the board, obviously because of COVID, to get his license. Tremendous uh, young talent, GB squad member. Can I just use the reference Sam gave about Solomon? Gamer than a hooker in Amsterdam. Really? Okay, that's an interesting one. Yeah, just talented, super talented, and comes out of that podium squad. Um, and, you know, a, a very, very talented heavyweight that I think will move quickly as well. And I think you'll see that starting on Saturday night. Ellie Hopkins will make her pro debut. And as this is going out, probably in half an hour's time, yeah. something like that, we can also announce the uh, signing of Sandy Ryan, yeah. who we're about to announce in half an hour. Um, fantastic young fighter. Of course, we know women's boxing is flying. But even before I was in with women's boxing as I am now, I watched Sandy on a GB squad and I always felt she'd be a fantastic fighter. She had a great amateur career. Now she leaves the podium squad, coming in at super lightweight, which of course you've got Chantelle Cameron there, you've got Katie Taylor, the division below, you've got, Terry, uh, you've got Terry Harper who will inevitably move up, you've got Tasha Jonas who can fight anywhere between super feather and super lightweight. You know, I think Sandy is someone that can win world titles at super lightweight, at welterweight, at light middleweight. You know, who knows in time she could be fighting Clarissa Shields, I think she's of that level and I'm looking forward to her pro debut. Do you need the toilet or something? No, I don't. My card's running out. I've got one more question for you and then we can, uh, we can finish and you can go back and do business. Are you any closer to making your decision regarding your future broadcast-wise? Uh, we'll, there will be an announcement in due course. Still got another minute if you want to talk no, about anything. That's it. No problem. Edward Hearn, thank you very much for... 40 minutes of your time today. And I was supposed to have a meeting. That's what you originally said to me. Oh, so I did have a meeting. You're I thought I'd do this first. You're eventually putting people, me first. People needed to know. Thank you very much. Tune in Sky Sports, The Zone, this Saturday night.